Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. Today I'm in upstate New York fly fishing with a couple friends of mine, uh, Andrew and uh, Raymond, and we're here principally doing nymph fishing. When I first started fly fishing, my mentor taught me everything he knew about nymph fishing. He told me, he said, if you want to catch big fish and a lot of fish, he said, you got to learn how to nymph fish. Today we're going to be talking about the tactics and strategies that the three of us have learned over the years, plus we'll be referring to several well-known nymph fishers and some of the tactics and techniques that they use. It's going to be a great show. I know you're going to enjoy it. Stay with us. It is a beautiful September day and conditions are ideal for nymphing. Today we are fishing on some of the beautiful rivers of upstate New York. Specifically, we are on some of the systems in the eastern Adirondacks. These rivers generally have good public access and support healthy levels of trout. Raymond Sander Regeer is a respected artist specializing in prints of outdoor scenes. He's been an avid fly fisher for most of his life and enjoys nymph fishing. Andrew Badley is a doctor who specializes in HIV cases. Like Raymond, he has been a fly fisher for quite a few years. He professes that nymph fishing is his favorite way of fishing for trout, and he has accumulated a great deal of knowledge of the various techniques possible in this type of fishing. In today's show, both Andrew and Raymond will show me some of the techniques and rigging options available for nymph fishing. I'm standing here at the bottom end of a pool, kind of in a tail out section. Uh, fast water at the head of the pool, and it's a little bit slower here, although the current's still pretty good. The uh, water is somewhere between two and three feet deep, and there's a lot of rocks. Um, probably the fish will be lying on the downstream side of the rocks, just waiting for food to drift by, and then they'll jump up and drift, uh, grab the food. The rig I'm using right now is two flies in tandem. Uh, the lead fly is a weighted fly. It's a size 12 gold rib hare's ear with a tungsten bead head. And about uh, 12 to 18 inches below that, I have about a size 8 or a size 10 stone fly. As we saw earlier, there's a lot of stone flies in this river, and they're about the size 8 to 10 range and, and mostly black. I have a strike indicator on, a floating uh, pinch-on strike indicator, and I have that about 4 feet above my, lead, my downstream fly. And the reason I chose 4 feet is it's about twice the depth of the water, and hopefully that'll allow it to go down through the bottom of the water. Uh, my goal for fishing it is to, to fish the bottom, which is where the fish are probably lying, um, and try to get a natural drift of the fly um, coming down the river to make it look like a fly just drifting downstream. My main aim as I'm, I'm fishing this is to try to maintain a drag-free drift all the way downstream. Uh, the moment I have any drag put into the line, it makes the, the fly's float look unnatural. That having said, I just had a hit. Um, so it wants to be a drag-free drift. As I, I try to mend the line as I'm going downstream to promote that drag-free drift. And, uh, and as I'm doing that, the, the main thing is to try to keep the flies as close to the bottom as possible.
When I fish uh, pocket water, and this is a small pool, so it's very much like most pocket water, I usually fish it in the same way you fish a pool. You start at the bottom end, because you never know where fish trout are going to be, first, first of all. You start at the bottom end, and uh, short cast first, and then you work your way up. Now, we are nymphing here, and um, we're nymphing because there is no hatch going on at the moment. We checked the uh, rocks and we found some evidences of what types of nymph. There's stoneflies in here, there's some mayflies, caddisflies. I've got something on that is pretty close to a stonefly. Then once we've worked the bottom end of the pool, and in this case, we're looking at pocket water, um, what we do is we work our way up. And in every situation where you have water flowing in, fast water flowing into a, a little hole, you've got seams that form. The seams form right on the edge of the fast water and the slow water. And the trout will sit right in that seam so that they can sit in the slow water and pick off the food as it comes down the fast water. So what we try and do is we try cover the whole area but concentrating on specific areas in this case the seams. Now I don't like to use an indicator. Um, sometimes I wonder if I should because of my eyesight but one thing I don't I like to do is watch the line and as soon as I see that line hesitate I I strike. That's my indicator. Now I'm going to fish the slower run on the right hand side of this stretch, stretch of river. Um, on the far side, on the bank side, on my right, there's a slow rip and there's a little shelf uh, underneath that rock, which would be a prime place. If I was a fish, I'd want to hide in that because the water's moving there, it's nicely aerated, and food should be carried into it. Between me and there, there's this faster section of moving water, and if my fly line gets in there, it's going to drag my fly at a rate that's faster than the water on the right-hand side. So needless to say, I don't want to do that. I want it to drift at the natural speed of the current over there. So the approach that I can do is wait over there, but then I'll ruin this water here, or cast above it and try to hold my fly line in the slower moving water so I don't get the drag. So we'll try that out. Oh, same spot, and I missed him again. This time I saw him. Like I said. Huh? Pass through the pool with the new nymph. What was the nymph you put on? The gold herb. Oh. Beat head? Yeah. Nice heavy tungsten. Is that about 14, 15 inches? Yeah, I'd say it's about 14. Me and my, uh, you got them there? Oh, yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Pretty colors. Beautiful. 
Well done, sir. Nice fish. All right. Okay, let's get some more here. Some of the terminal tackle you should carry when nymph fishing is various weights and flotation devices. There are numerous types of flotation devices available to the angler. Options include pulsa pinch-on foam pads, cork or plastic indicators which have a hole through them in which you insert a toothpick to hold the line, pinch-on putty such as the Loon environmental products, or fluorescent yarn which is dressed with dry fly paste. There are several options for anglers who want to weight their rigs or flies so they'll penetrate farther into the water column. The traditional approach is the use of lead split shot. However, due to environmental concerns, many anglers are shying away from lead and the use of non-toxic products such as Loon's deep soft weight are becoming increasingly popular. Loon's brass head soft weight is often pinched onto the tops of flies in place of bead heads as a means of weighting them so they can get near the bottom. A third type of indicator that has recently emerged is the use of fly lines with markings on them. Rio's indicator lines are specifically designed for uses such as nymph fishing, as they feature alternating bands on the first 20 feet of the fly line. All of these devices have their strengths and weaknesses, and it seems personal preferences and experimentation are the only true means of determining the best rig for you. When you're not using weights on your rigging system, an ideal cast to ensure your fly is near the bottom is the tuck cast. This cast drives your fly and leader under the line and gets them to the bottom faster, thus alleviating the effects of the current which naturally push your fly towards the surface. To execute a tuck cast, make a normal cast and when your rod gets to the 10 o'clock position, stop it sharply, pulling back with the last two fingers of your casting hand and driving the thumb forward. Your elbow should tuck back under your arm when this cast is complete. The key is that your fly will become much more effective because it will be near the bottom feeding zone. We found numerous nymph types when checking under stones. Though it is nice to know the type, pragmatically it is not usually necessary. Simply match the size, color, and most importantly, silhouette of the nymphs you are finding. As you progress with your entomological skills, you will better understand and identify the various nymph types in your local systems. There are several books I would recommend to viewers which provide excellent details on entomology and nymphing. Prospecting for Trout is an excellent all-round book written by Tom Rosenbauer, which provides anglers with in-depth information on nymphing strategies and rigging. Hatches 2 is a complete and thorough guide to insect hatches throughout North America and will greatly assist fly fishers in understanding the insect life in their local rivers and lakes. Art Flick's Streamside Guide is a valuable asset to identifying insects and their imitations, and most anglers will find the book size perfect for taking on the water. This area here, there's a, an edge of rocks, and just over the edge looks like a nice deep hole. And there has to be fish lying in there, but as I said, I haven't been successful in getting them yet. So what I've changed to is a, a pretty heavily weighted system. Right now I'm fishing with, at the end of my leader, I have a small piece of lead split shot, and then about two feet down from that, I have a weighted fly again. This one's a flashback olive bead head um, hair's ear pattern. And this technique is essentially a high sticking technique. And the idea is that the lead split shot will go to the bottom first, because that's the heaviest, and behind it will be drifting the, the weighted nymph. Again, it's a high sticking technique, and try to drop the fly and the weight right where you think the fish are, slightly above it, 
and just drift it down over their head, feeling for any slight resistance in the fly. You're going to feel resistance because hopefully it's on the bottom and bouncing off rocks. So every time you do feel that resistance, just give it a little tug or a little flick, and quite quickly you'll, you'll learn to distinguish the bounce of a rock from the take of a fish. I'm feeling the bounce of the rock now, and unfortunately no takes of fish just yet. Some of the nymph rigs we use today include Andrew's favorite setup, the California rig, which is a right angle flotation system, and also a two nymph rig, which features a dropper fly, which can imitate an emerger. It is important to check your provincial or state regulations to ensure that the use of two flies is legal. The rods we use today include a Thompson Thomas Horizon, a Winston LT, and I used a Diamondback Aeroflex. All rods were five weights in a nine foot length. I used a Teton number six reel. For the tying recipes to the flies we use today and more, visit our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Oh, nice fish, nice brown. Well done, Andrew. Another beautiful fish. Well, this is just another, you're certainly showing why nymphing works, eh? Oh, yeah. Now, let's see if I can get over here without drowning. Just wet the net here. Yeah, when you're ready. Where is he? Here, I'll put on my glasses. See him better. Can you bring him upstream? Has he gone down? I'll come over to you. There we go. Oh, nice fish. Beautiful fish. Let's get him in the water here. Oh. Let's bring him over here. Okay. Well done. Thank you, sir. Okay. You got your uh, hemostats? Out. That's a nice fish. Oh look, he's just slashing them. Look at that. I wonder what that caused that. Bigger brother. Somebody took a whack at him. Okay, let's get this guy ready. Oh look at that. That's a nice fish. Okay, let's... There you go. Again, well done. Excellent, sir. That was great. That's, this is why I like nymph fishing. You not only catch a lot more fish a lot of times, but you catch some of the biggest fish. The biggest fish you know, it's right. just like streamer fishing. Well, that was another great brown trout. And as you can see, nymph fishing is extremely effective. It's a great way of catching trout as well as other species. I strongly recommend you do some research. There's some great books out there that talk a lot about the different types of nymph tactics the rigs you can use, as well as the patterns. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher is sponsored by Bank of Montreal Atlantic Salmon Federation MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products,
Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.